Well, we're back, and happy first week of October. I would like to announce that I do have a plan for this month where my video every other week is something Halloween or spooky related. In the meantime, I am trying to prepare some videos to go in between those that will be entirely commentary with no art because I genuinely don't have time to draw so often with, you know, all my classes. But I want to provide content for you guys since you all still give me support even when I'm not uploading. Plus, I love to chat, so with that in mind, I'll always be able to share something with you guys. The visuals for those videos will be more than likely just gaming clips, don't get too excited, I'm limited with my laptop options. But anyways, to start us off for this month, I wanted to begin with the highly requested Sun, Moon, and Eclipse redesign. But before we get into the art, I want to say hello, my name is Dexterly, and if you like what you see in this video, be sure to leave a like and comment and subscribe while you're here. My other platforms, like my Instagram, TikTok, Ko-Fi, and Patreon, are listed in the description below via Linktree, so be sure to check that out for more content. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Unlike my original Security Breach redesign video, I actually don't have too much to complain about regarding Sun and Moon's designs. I think they are pretty solid on their own, but I figured I could make some adjustments to fit a more specific vibe. And another thing that is unlike the first video, which you should go watch if you haven't, I will not be following the same rules as I did in that one. These designs don't follow the Scott formula because honestly, I don't think the characters themselves follow the Scott formula. They don't look like the puppet, and they don't fit into really any of the previous games, I mean they barely fit in Security Breach. But they are fan favorites, and I understand why, I love these guys, so I guess we can welcome them into the Faz Club. With that being said, I throw really all of my rules out the window with these designs, and I kinda just went for it since they already don't fit in. So why not take that aspect and run with it? Beginning with Sun, I did a little research on jesters, which honestly was unnecessary because I know the species very well, and I found a few inspiration pieces to get my mind going since I genuinely couldn't think of anything to nitpick. But then it hit me. The thing that I see in fan art and human designs of these guys that isn't an actual feature on the character. Shirts. These guys do not make it clear if they are intended to be wearing shirts or not on their animatronic form because the torso is all the plastic hard material while they have fabric bits like their pants, ribbons, and shoes, and Moon's hat. So either the shirt is intended to be there but painted on the body, much like Monty's pants, or we can just assume clothes work differently for celestial beings like the sun. This was the first element for me to work with, and from there, the rest is easy. I wanted to make them feel even more bubbly rather than scrunkly because these things work with babies. BABIES! And you want to tell me Fazbear Entertainment gave everyone else regular looking characters that somewhat reflect their decal art and the impressional humans get cracked out Twizzlers for mascots? So, to make them more along the jester clown route, I gave them really poofy neck scarves, billowed pants and sleeves, suspenders, more flowy ribbons, and more traditional jester mask looks for the face. I didn't want to change them completely because, again, I didn't really see an initial problem, but I figured it wouldn't hurt to make them look more jester-esque to fit their role better. Eclipse was the difficult one. I wanted him to be a good blend of the two without looking just like one or the other, and without looking like a completely new character. So I pretty much just drew Sun's base like I did for Moon, and then I scuffed his left side, our right, to the original model. But I went for a little different approach with the smaller details. Nothing too drastic, but enough to notice if you're really looking for it. Now that I had the design out of the way, I had to figure out the coloring. Now, I know for a fact that everyone is already up in arms and their fingers are burning a hole into their keyboards because I took away the stripes and stars on the pants. But let me explain before you go crazy on me. I was trying to be practical and logical about the transformation process from sun to moon and vice versa. You see, we never really see the transformation, but we see it stuck in the middle with Eclipse. So I developed a theory that the colors are like those holographic stickers that flip the image based on how you look at it. Meaning the colors could do the same with simple reflections or little lights woven into the fibers of the clothes. I did my best to make the colors match up for the perfect color swap, but some details just didn't roll over properly in order for me to make an aesthetically pleasing design. So while this point was the driving factor for the choices and the removal of the differing shapes on the pants, I am a bit loose with it because I had to ignore the rule for some aspects and elements. But otherwise, the rule still stands of matching hues and shades. And with the way the final designs look, stars and stripes on the pants would just make the designs too busy. And that's why they are on the originals, because the base design in Security Breach is very bland without those elements being present. 
I also altered the original coloring just a bit because of saturation and whatnot, but it's still relatively the same. Eclipse, once again, was my problem child. You see, I was content with doing what Ruin did with the mid-transition design. I liked the idea of Eclipse having more of a sunset kind of look because of the idea of the rotations of the sun and moon and how that affects the sky colors. I like the dark red and orange fan designs other people have done, but if we're going entirely off of what Ruin presented, then I think the thought of going with the colors of Dawn work very well and adds enough variety to get the point across. I also thought that there was just so much going on with this piece that doing a rendered background would make it impossible to look at. So we just did some fun little gradients and called it a day. I actually wanted way more dynamic poses with this one, but A, I was distracted while working on this, and B, I ran out of time. So we got what I could manage to do with my time frame. And that's all I have for my sun, moon, and eclipse redesigns. What characters would you like me to redesign next? It can be any IP and I'll happily look into it before diving in. And if you really want me to draw your chosen characters, join my Patreon where you can vote on polls, DM me, and all sorts of other things that get automatically chosen. My tiers start at a single dollar a month and you can get all sorts of perks including an in-video mention for as long as you're a member. But thank you to our Patreon subscriber, Caitlin. You've officially been a member for three months now. Or at least that's what my Patreon says. I feel like it's been longer. Uh, really appreciate you. And if you want to be part of my Patreon subscribers, because you get mentioned, it's really awesome. Link is in the description, so be sure to check it out. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. Comment your thoughts on whoever you want me to redesign next. And remember, Transformers 1 is a good movie. Paramount was just scared of promoting animation because of small-minded moviegoers who assume animation automatically means kid target audience. So go see it or Freddy Fazbear will appear in your fridge at 3 a.m. Now that you've been properly convinced to see the greatest film of the year, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and before you go, let's roll the outro.